Okay, so Fessel invented these functions uh, for problems with cylindrical symmetry, also known as azimuthal symmetry or circular symmetry. Things like drums, that uh, which you have circular symmetry, but the thing can move in the z direction. Um, but the the thing is symmetrical that way. Also, pipes, cylinders. Okay, so you can see why the zeros of the vessel function of British military secrets in the Second World War. When you think of this as a cannon. Um, Anyway, the, uh, if you just look at uh, small z, well, uh, uh, actually, if we just first look at this, this series, um, each term has more factors of n, so it certainly converges, in fact, absolutely and probably uniformly within any circle. Um, the z's occur just as uh, c to the n plus 2m. So the, the function is entire. Um, and in a moment, we'll um, notice that n occurs somewhat discreetly. It occurs here, and then it occurs here in a factorial. Well, you can promote n to a real number from an integer by using the gamma function. And in fact, using the gamma function can make it complex. And uh, we'll do that a little bit later. But if you look at this for small z, obviously you drop all these terms, you just take this term. So, oh, I, damn, I forgot to bring my semi-dust-free erasers. Uh, Jn of z is approximately z to the n over 2 to the n n factorial, or um, z much less than 1. Um, if you look at these alternating signs here, they re may remind you of trigonometric functions, and in fact that's true, and um, for the other uh, domain, uh, z much greater than uh, 1, jn of z is approximately uh, a cosine. So 2 over pi z cosine of z minus n pi over 2 minus pi over 4 plus higher terms. So it's approximately a cosine. And, um, oh, I, I screwed up the other night um, printing something and I wound up with too many of these copies. Anybody want a copy of chapter 9? What's chapter 9? Huh? Special function. Just chapter. Oh. No, I got one last time. You got yours already? I'll pick one up. All right, we've got two back there. Then. It's got to be the menu. By the way, I'm thinking of making the final open book. Is that a good idea? Well, I only have it on a computer. Can I have it on a computer? Huh? I only have the yeah. Or could you print out all the relevant sections that we need? So you, I just don't have a hard copy of the book. I have it on my computer. It's a PDF. All right, you can bring your computer, but um, okay. And I can use two desks, one for my computer. I'll share my book if that means we get a view of the book. Yeah, can we do a uh, can we do like a group exam? <laughs> like a what? A group exam, so we work together. No. no. <laughs> I'm teaching 467 in the spring. Now, in the spring, anything goes because it's not a core course. I think, so I'm not intending in fact, to have any exams in the spring. I never liked them as a student. I don't see why I should inflict them on you guys. Okay. Um, 
so these are the various forms, and of course they satisfy Bessel's equation. And um, Bessel's equation, if we have Jn of z, it's Jn um, uh, double prime plus 1 over z Jn prime plus 1 minus n squared over z squared Jn equals 0. I see I didn't write that in self-adjoint form. Let me um, see if I can flip to a self-adjoint form of this thing. And in self-adjoint form, it would be minus z uh, Jn prime prime plus n squared over z Jn equals uh, z Jn. So this is the self-adjoint form of the uh, expression. So basically one um, multiplies uh, by um, uh, z and uh, gets this uh, expression. So that's the self-adjoint form. Um, why is that why is that considered self-adjoint form? Well, you know, the, the canonical form for self-adjoint is minus P U prime prime plus Q U equals lambda rho U. And the key thing is this. That is to say, the, the derivatives all act in this compact way. That's self-adjoint form. Okay. And then you can have, and then the rest of it has to look like this. And there's a certain amount, I guess, of sloppiness here. Um, uh, this row arises, you know, from if you if you have just an, an ordinary differential equation, when you convert it to self-adjoint form, you wind up with a row. Yeah. What does self-adjoint mean? Like in Well, it's like, like in quantum mechanics, right? Yeah, so it's like you take the like, well, what's the Hermitian conjugate of the integrate like parts? Well integrates like let's see. Yeah, Unfortunately, I only brought the Bessel uh, chapter, but what it what it means is basically your differential operator on uh, say U then you have v, dx, between a and b should be the same as the integral a to b, l on v. Uh, in fact, let me just write this more symmetrically. It's, um, plus a boundary term that you want uh, to vanish or you want u and v to be such that this boundary term vanishes. Okay, this is chapter six, equation six, equation. I don't remember. Yeah? So how does the solution change if your like eigenvalue, like your lambda, isn't one? What happens? Do you just pick it up in the argument or is there something more to it? Lambda is like, the, the eigenvalue, and what about lambda? Sure, so, so whenever you wrote the, the Bessel equation up there in self-adjoint form, you're taking lambda equal to 1, right? Because your wave function is z. Oh, okay, okay, so, okay. Um, this, we haven't gotten serious yet about eigenvalues in this equation. I'm just writing it in self-adjoint form. Okay. What, uh, you see, we haven't said what a and b are. Mm. And remember, self, you want a self-adjoint system. Mm. So that means you have these boundary conditions and this thing vanishing. And that has to do with the zeros of the Bessel function. Uh, so just hold, don't hold your breath, but actually you certainly get a question. And you get a candy like right? this. Mr. Yee. Okay. Um, by the way, I heard something very interesting today, I think, on Bloomberg, which is one of the best sources of information. It's 
mainly financial, but they cover everything um, correctly. Um, in China, people who are begging on the street don't ask for coins anymore or bills. They have a little piece of paper on a stand and they ask you to come up with your smartphone and take a picture of it to make a deposit of 10 cents, 20 cents, whatever, to their bank account. In other words, the beggars are electronic. And um, this is just one of many signs that uh, China is pulling ahead of us. And if Congress doesn't do something about funding science, uh, we're going to be doing that longer the way 100 years ago they did all laundry. OK. Um, so I think all that. Here's the magic generating function. e to the z over 2, u minus 1 over u, is the sum n equals minus infinity plus infinity un jn of z. So this is. Um, Anytime I see things like generating functions, I'm just amazed. Um, here are pictures of the first few vessel, cylindrical vessel functions, and you see that they're starting to become, starting to look like trick functions there. Um, the, anyway, from the generating function and the series expansion, one can derive an integral representation. And uh, this is one of the homework problems, but I'm not sure I'll assign this particular problem in the for next week. Z sine theta minus m theta in n. D theta. So um, that allows you to, to uh, show that j minus n of minus z is the same thing as jn of z, and also that uh, jn of z is minus 1 to the n j of minus n of z. By the way, that m that I said might be a typo in the orthogonality relation for the associated Legendre polynomials, it's uh, for negative n, you just replace m by absolute value of m. Um, J0 has a particularly simple form in this expression because the n disappears. and um, I'm trying to find a place to write it. J0 of z is 1 over 2 pi integral 0 to 2 pi uh, e to the i z cosine theta d theta. And this is also 1 over 2 pi integral 0 to 2 pi, well, obviously, e to the i z sine theta, because um, cosine and sine are the same thing, get shifted uh, on a 2 pi interval. And um, one of the things that one, one of the things one learns is that um, jn of um, 0, in other words, you said z equal to 0. You just have cosine of um, minus n theta. And um, if you then set um, what do I want to set? Well, it's not apparent, not immediately obvious. J uh, n of 0 show is 0 and j n j 0 of 0 is equal to 1. This follows a lot more clearly from um, 
this expansion here, you set any, you set z equal to zero, everything disappears. This is just one, and for n equals zero, this is just one, and so j um, zero is uh, one. By the way, Amanda, you can sit anywhere. You don't sit in the back because you can't. Okay. And you can sign in any on the sheet. Also, I said we're going to make the test open book after all. Okay. Okay, there's a sign sheet so okay. Okay, well, if you differentiate this uh, generating function with respect to u and uh, play around a little bit, uh, you can get uh, a recursion relation jn minus 1 of z plus jn plus 1 of z is equal to 2n over z, j n of z. And if you differentiate with respect to z, you can get uh, another uh, recursion relation or identity, j n minus 1 of z minus j n plus 1 of z is a 2 j n prime of z. So these are um, uh, identities that the vessel function satisfy. Do I owe anybody a candy? I have a question. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Bad throw there. So in, a, in an actual example, say the drum, what? In what? an actual drum. So. For an example, yeah. in, say the drum problem, what do the different, like what does Z stand for, what does N stand for? Okay, okay. Um, Z is the height of the displacement of the, um, oh, I'm sorry, Z. I thought Z in the sense of Z axis. This Z is the radius up from the center of the drum. Okay. So it's out like that. Well, and we would call it rho. Or, or, yeah, rho. In the example, I call it rho. Okay. And then the boundary is r. And then j would describe... j would describe the elevation of the um, surface of the drum. Okay. So to, to get it the vibration, elevation, do you, huh? do you sum over j's, and that's what the subscript n is? You mean sum over n. Over n, right. Sure, yeah, the arbitrary... The arbitrary shape of the drum is, uh, is something that's a function of time, and it involves uh, all the modes in principle, although these higher modes obviously are, in a real drum are, are excited only a tiny bit. On Wednesday of next week, I'll try to do some more examples of this. Okay, well, as I said, you can promote n from an integer to a real number or even a complex number, and uh, what's often written is j nu of z is z over 2 to the nu, and then it's a sum n equals 0 to infinity minus 1 to the m over m factorial and then gamma of uh, m plus nu plus 1 and um, z over 2 to the 2m. Okay, now if we look at um, the Bessel function in self-adjoint form, to focus more on this business of eigenvalues and so forth, and thinking of it as a self adjoint system, what we would have would be minus x j n prime, and I've got the a x. I'm going to try to switch notation on the fly because a I think is a bad choice here because. We were thinking here in terms of A as being the uh, lower limit of the integral of, 
of interest. But in these cylindrical problems, obviously the lower limit is generically zero. It doesn't have to be. You could have um, a, uh, a waveguide in which you have a center region, a center pipe, and an outer pipe, and the medium, and a medium in between. So it doesn't have to be zero. But anyway, uh, let me try to do this on the fly. And this would be Kx prime uh, plus n squared over x jn of kx equals k squared x jn of kx. Okay, so this is a generic, this is the self, the, the Bessel function and self-adjoint form where we've um, introduced uh, an extra parameter k which plays a role, you know, a, a role related to the uh, to an eigenvalue. Now, if we want a um, the Sturm Liouville system, we have a, a P, as you recall, J N V prime minus J N prime V, and now we're going zero to B, the outer limit which we, I probably should have called R, since typically it is a radius. And, um, and so we want this to vanish. And of course, this is, in particular, it's, um, well, what's P? P is X. So it's X JN of K X v prime of kx minus jn prime of kx v of kx zero b where b is the upper limit of the interval which is typically the radius of some cylindrically symmetric system and um, so what we, what we know is that if n is greater than zero, the jn's are going to vanish at zero. And um, if, if n is equal to zero, then jn of zero is just one. And, uh, okay. So, on the other hand, p is x. So j zero of zero being one is harmless because x will vanish. And um, so what we do is we want um, kb. We want the j's, we want jn to vanish at kb, or k times the radius. So that's where the British military secrets come in. They're the zeros of the vessel function. So what we want is Jn of Kb, or if you want, Jn of Kr to equal um, Jn of the nth zero of the nth vessel function. So J sub n has an infinite series of zeros, an infinite series of zeros because they're like trig functions. So, and the nth one uh, is called z sub n common m. Those are the zeros then of the nth Bessel function. And then um, the eigenvalues corresponding to k squared here um, well, k, what is k? k times um, b is equal to z, so k is equal to z over b. So, the, so, so those are the eigenvalues, and um, we, we know roughly what they are because we know that the jn's are cosines at large z. So the, so there is, so if, if, and we're asking for the zeros of the Bessel function, so they're funny numbers for small z. 
But once this approximation takes hold, then they're approximately whatever makes the cosine zero. And the cosine is zero when it's pi over two. So um, if z is just basically um, m pi over two, we've got a cosine of some, we can arrange the cosine to be cosine of pi over two or three pi over two and uh, to vanish. And in fact, we want to cancel the pi over four also. So these, these zeros are approximately um, m pi plus n plus one pi over two plus pi over four. So these are places where the Bessel function um, Jn vanishes. And now whether these are the official British state secrets or not, um, they're just places where it vanishes. Obviously you can play around with M and M and get, um, get still get the Bessel function to vanish. But the point I want to make here is that as m goes to infinity, the, zero, the eigenvalues go to infinity because the eigenvalues, knm, are equal to znm over b, where b is r or some fixed uh, integer. And so these are something like m pi over b plus details. And consequently, the eigenvalues go to infinity, which means that the set of Bessel functions is complete. And um, the, the, the self-adjoint form here then would be minus x jn of znm x over b prime, prime, plus n squared over x, jn of znm, x over b, uh, equals z squared n comma m over b squared, x, jn of znm, x over b. Okay, so that's what the self-adjoint self form looks like. And um, we have then, uh, these, because the eigenvalues go to infinity, the Bessel functions are complete and orthogonal. They are orthogonal just because it's a stimulable the system and we're getting um, these boundary terms to vanish which is why the zeros are important. Um, and the orthogonality relations then are zero to B, uh, X, JN of um, ZNM, X over B, JN, ZN, M prime, X over B. So M labels the eigenvalue. Dx is equal to delta m m prime. So m labels the eigenvalue. The n labels the system, the differential equation. And then you have b squared over 2, j prime squared sub n of z n m n. Oh god. N m. Notice that's prime. If this if the prime were a, this would be just zero. And this thing is the same thing as delta m, m prime, b squared over two, j squared, n plus m of z and m. Okay, now, um, the, the cutest way to express completeness is to use Dirac's delta function. And um, the formula, the relevant formula, which I actually exhibited in this graph here, is 2x to the alpha, 
y to the 1 minus alpha, or alpha is some number between 0 and 1, any one will work. y to the 1 minus alpha over b squared, wait a minute, I've got y to the 1 minus alpha twice, this is stupid. Some, for some reason I use, I switch to k. k equals 1 to infinity, jn of z, n k, x over b, jn of z, n k, x, no, y, over b. And then a normalization factor here is j1 squared of z0, k. OK, so that's the delta function. And um, I plotted this out for n equals 0. And sure enough, it, it works really very nicely. Um, you might say, well, what about if we are dealing with an infinite interval? Well, if you have an infinite interval, then um, I wrote one delta function relation in the, in, in the book, but I decided to change variables a little bit and to write it this way. Delta of x minus y is x integral 0 to infinity k jn of kx jn of ky dk. So here we have a sum over the eigenvalues. Here we're integrating over them because we, on an infinite interval, one typically has a continuous range of eigenvalues. Um, and many of these interval, many of these relations work for real values of n. In other words, you can replace n by nu as long as nu is greater than minus one half. So pretty much all of this works in that case. So the Bessel drum example, I invite you to read, but since life is short, I'll um, skip it and go to um, the next topic, which is to apply all this stuff more generally to Helmholtz's equation in uh, cylindrical coordinates and three dimensions. And so if you remember Helmholtz's equation is minus Laplacian on something is alpha squared something. Laplacian is intrinsically a negative operator, so minus Laplacian tends to be positive, and so this is typically a real alpha squared. And uh, in the beginning of chapter six, section five, we looked at these things. And we looked at, we saw that the Laplacian was minus 1 over rho, um, rho v comma rho, this is the rho derivative, so I'm using common notation here, 1 over rho v double phi derivative plus rho v double c derivative equals alpha squared v. And I'm not sure why I use that notation. But anyway, um, one can, this is separable, and one can set this to be Bessel function phi z um, as long as b obeys Bessel's equation. So one has um, uh, gosh, that is written in a funny form. Um, so what one the standard self-adjoint form is looks like this. And so let me maybe convert this on the fly. So it is um, rho b prime prime plus um, alpha squared plus k squared 
rho squared minus n squared all that over rho t equals zero. And um, when, so B must satisfy Bessel's equation. Uh, phi satisfies minus phi double prime equals n squared phi, and Z has to satisfy Z double prime equals k squared Z. So that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is those two or well, actually, the, the, this is always the same. So this one, or z double prime uh, is minus k squared z. So the z dependence can be um, the real exponential or, or an imaginary exponential. And um, then the solutions in the first case here are vkn of rho phi z is jn of square root of alpha squared plus k squared rho e to the i n phi e to the k z where k and, and n can be positive or negative. So that's that case. Or the other case is jn of square root of alpha squared minus k squared rho e to the i n phi e to the i k z. So the point is that if you flip the sign of k squared here, then alpha squared uh, plus k squared goes to alpha squared minus k squared. So, th so this is the Helmholtz equation. And um, if you want all of 2 pi to be physical, then n should be an integer. But n doesn't have to be an integer if you only have part of the circle physical. Um, when alpha zero is when alpha is zero, uh, Helmholtz's equation just becomes Laplace's equation, and then uh, things are a little bit simpler. One has uh, v k n is equal to j n of k rho, not the syrup, but k times rho, um, e to the i n p e to the kz, or vkn is jn of ik rho e to the in p e to the ikz. Okay. Now, um, this thing uh, is complex, but um, it's complex in a very simple way, and you can make it real by um, um, a standard manipulation, which is that um, you can find the modified Bessel function I knew of k rho. See, I knew this, you probably knew it too. Okay, I knew of k rho as i to the minus nu j nu of i k rho. Okay, so this is the real modified Bessel function and it occurs in um, it occurs not only in a particular form of the Laplace equation, but also in the diffusion equation. The diffusion equation means something like this. Well, I shouldn't have written phi, I should write V. So this is sort of, that's really, I don't know. I have this habit of just using the same old letter for many different things. And um, it's 
part of the fact that I just can't remember names, and letters are names for variables, so I don't remember them either. I just use A for everything, and it's stupid. Anyway, um, this would look like this. Uh, v dot is um, D or plus C of V. So this is a diffusion constant. D, D is the diffusion constant. This is the diffusion equation. And um, it's, of course, not very different from the Schrodinger equation. With the Schrodinger equation, you just have an I here and, of course, a minus sign there. So it's a small world. In I'm not getting anywhere with my jokes today. Um, so what uh, what do we do? We set uh, v equal to b phi v, and uh, in particular, b has to satisfy Bessel's equation, which now is um, rho b prime prime minus alpha squared minus k squared rho squared plus m squared over rho b is 0. Um, and phi and b satisfy, well, phi minus phi double prime is n squared phi and um, z double prime equals k squared z, or z double prime even minus k squared z. And um, in the first case, this case, the solutions are v is equal to i n of the square root of alpha squared minus k squared rho e to the i m phi e to the kz. And when I say k, k could be negative as well as positive. Or uh, i n of the square root of alpha squared plus k squared rho uh, e to the i n the um, e to the k v. Okay, so these are the, the varieties of solutions for Bessel functions. Um, the next example is from biophysics, and it does involve something cute, but um, if you want to see it on the, in the problem session on Wednesday, we'll, I'll, we'll do it there. Um, if you want just a very brief thing about membranes, there is uh, something quite remarkable about cell membranes. Um, in living cells, there's a potential drop from here to there of something like 60 millivolts. And so you'd say, well, 60 millivolts, big deal. Um, that's nothing. But it actually is something because this distance here is very uh, tight. This is 5 nanometers. And um, consequently, the, um, the electric field across there is um, something that's hard to arrange in the laboratory. I, well, it's Let's, let's make the arithmetic simple. Let's make it 50 millivolts divided by 5 nanometers. So going to reasonable units, this is 50 and to the minus 3. This is 5 and to the minus 9. And so this is 10 to the 6 volts. In other words, 10 uh, megavolts. So the voltage across the, um, the cell membrane, these are living cells, is... Um, hey, isn't this... The voltage... Are you I'm sorry, the electric field. The electric field, what am I saying? Megavolts per meter. 
So the electric field is used. It's 10 megavolts per meter, which um, is, uh, in fact, it's even a little bit higher than that because the five nanometers is the full thickness of a membrane, and the membrane has a certain um, a boundary layer. So it's more like four, and this is more like 60. So this is even 15 uh, megavolts per meter electric field. Um, this electric, this high electric field is one of the reasons why our nerves work and why we can think. Um, so, um, but it is, it is a surprising thing. Okay, I'm going to skip the rest of this biophysical example. And I think, I mean, unless there's, well, for maybe time, uh, the next two examples are cylindrical waveguides and a cylindrical cavity. If you want, I can do them here, or we can boost it to um, Wednesday. Can we have a show of hands? Uh, can we do more biophysics instead? You want the biophysics? Yeah. Is that because you want a candy? No. <laughs> I'll take it. It was a question, so good catch. Um, so you really want to hear more about the biophysics? All right. I By the know. way, there are two excellent talks tomorrow by a guy named Neumann um, uh, from NIH. Um, he's talking at 1.30 in room 190. And um, uh, then he's giving the colloquium at 3.30 up in the Smith Hall and the uh, young food at 3.15. Um, so uh, he's, um, the, the stuff he does is similar to what Keith Lidke does, which is to say um, super resolution imaging, imaging, uh, imaging um, cells and parts of cells to a resolution much smaller than the wavelength of light. And um, so that's uh, interesting. Okay, so if you want to, if you really want the biophysical example, um, let's see how far I can get here. Um, So these cells, by the way, um, have, a di have a size of the order of, let us say, 10 microns. Um, and the membrane, on the other hand, is only 5 nanometers thick. So there's a factor here of 10 to the minus 9, 10 to the minus 3. So the the, the width of the membrane is a million times smaller than the cell itself. And consequently, if you look at the membrane uh, locally, where this is five nanometers, then the thing is absolutely flat. And so that's why I um, analyze this thing in terms of cylindrical symmetry. Now, um, what we've got here is a phospholipid bilayer. So you have here um, lipids in here, and lipids are chains of CH2. Lipid is a fancy word for fat. And so these things, if it's a saturated fat, it looks like this. And um, what you have here are two hydrogens here, two hydrogens there, two hydrogens here, two hydrogens there, so forth. And um, so that's uh, CH2. Um, and uh, then you have out here at the end of the lipid is something that is typically a dipole. So you have something that is, let us say, minus plus, or plus minus, I forget which. And um, so, and you have here water out here. 
and in fact it's salty water. Um, and in fact it's actually sodium chloride type salt, salty water. In here you have potassium chloride salt, salty water. And um, in the cell or in the bilayer or in the membrane? Uh, brilliant in the cell, not the bilayer. So this is this was, I drew, drew this in the record. So you you get two. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we've got to have um, people correcting me when I make mistakes. Um, so it's inside the cell. You have potassium chloride outside. Uh, outside sodium chloride, in both cases salty water. And the fact that you have sodium there and potassium there is why nerves work. And, um, but we, we don't want to get into that at the moment. Um, so, uh, because this region is, um, uh, how shall I say, uh, just lipids. There are certainly no charges in here. And um, I'm taking the approximation here that there are no free charges in anywhere in this problem. And um, you will say, well, what about the sodium ions and the chloride ions? Well, they're surrounded by um, water molecules that um, screen them. And um, so they're not thought of as, um, uh, as free charges in the standard terminology. And so what we're going to do is we're going to write the lipid potential, rho z, as an integral dk of J0 of K rho M of K e to the KZ plus F of K e to the minus KZ. So you see these are solutions of um, Laplace's equation. And then V in the cytosol of rho Z, the cytosol being in here, and this is the exterior region, um, integral 0 to infinity dk, j0, k rho, sum d of k, e to the kz. Now, um, the reason I have e to the kz is that I'm taking z negative down here. If we had e to the minus kz, we'd have a uh, uh, an exponentially increasing potential, and that would be just absurd. And so then what we do is we use one of the Green's functions expression, g of um, rho and z, one over, this is a, this is equation 5.147, square root of rho squared plus z squared, and this is integral zero to infinity, dk over 4 pi, k0 of k rho, e to the minus k absolute value of c. And um, this is a, a form of the Schwingerm um, used a lot. Now, he may have invented it, but I don't know. It's hard to imagine that it was unknown in mid-20th century. He worked, by the way, on radar during the Second World War. Um, he was invited to join the Los Alamos nuclear project, but he said he'd like to work on something that would help end the war in Europe. And he was smart enough to realize that um, the Los Alamos project either was not going to be finished, or we wouldn't drop the bomb on white people in Europe. I'm not sure what his thinking was, but uh, it turned out to be correct. Um, and his work on radar helped uh, helped uh, win the war, although 
frankly, most of the fighting in Europe was done by the Red Army. Um, despite the one this you see in the Hollywood movies. Private Ryan didn't play that big a role. All right. I hope the governor doesn't watch this video, but I guess that the chances are very small. Okay, um, so what we do is we expand this potential in the water as an integral zero to infinity dk, j zero of k rho. Um, and now we have a couple of terms. Q over 4 pi epsilon w e to the minus k z minus h plus u of k e to the minus kz. So this is the potential due to a charge at point h. And you now see that I'm using this uh, Green's function, which uh, satisfies uh, minus Laplacian of, um, let us say, x minus y equals delta of x minus y. And um, so this form of the Green's function gives you the delta function at z equal to zero. This gives you the delta function at z equal to h. Well, the rest of this is, 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 technical, or is technical and a lot of details. Um, let's I don't know. I, I don't see the point in going through any more of this example. Um, so let's move on to some spherical Bessel functions. And because of the spherical symmetry, which is more symmetrical than cylindrical symmetry, the spherical Bessel functions are much simpler. And uh, the spherical Bessel functions uh, satisfy this equation. Whoops, it's lowercase j. JL prime prime. Um, and let me get this straight. Plus x squared minus L L plus one over. Uh, let me see. This is that. Right. Okay, there's no over. This is just J L. Okay, so this is our uh, equation. Um, and what do we see? We see that uh, P is equal to X squared. So there's no problem with things vanishing as the origin. X you can think of as R, or R times some scale factor. L is the angular momentum integer. And um, so what we do for Helmholtz's equation, um, minus Laplacian v is k squared v now. Uh, what we do is we set um, v equal to r theta phi, and in fact, what one can do is set this just as R Y, in other words, this is a spherical harmonic. And um, what is R? Well, what one sets R as uh, simply uh, J. So this is JL of um, JL of KR and then YLM of theta and phi. So these will satisfy the Helmholtz equation uh, where these are the spherical harmonics. Now, what is this JL? Well, this JL, remember that we could take the N in Bessel's cylindrical Bessel functions and promote N from an integer to a real number. 
So this is from a re a re an integer to a fraction, and it's square root of pi over 2x j of L plus a half. Okay. So the cylindrical Bessel functions, in other words, if you change the integer from L to L plus a half, they become simpler. And then you divide by a square root of x. And uh, these are very nice functions. Um, and Ward Rayleigh, I've never known how to pronounce that guy's name anyway, shows that this was minus 1 to the L, x to the L, 1 over x d by dx to the L of sine x over x. So quite a remarkably simple expression. Um, in fact, it reminds one a little bit of Rodriguez, but anyway. Um, there's a recurrence relation, JL plus 1 of x is L over x, JL of x minus J prime L of x. Um, the, the lowest one, J0, is uh, sine x over x. J1, I keep writing capital J, J1 is um, sine x over x squared minus cosine x over x. Now that, you might think, is singular, but it's really not singular because, um, well, just because it isn't, I guess it's not obvious to me what actually is going on. We have sine x over x minus cosine x. Well, as x goes to 0, this becomes 1, this becomes 1, and so the constant terms cancel, so you just have higher order terms in x divided by x, so it's non-singular as x goes to 0. Um, the of these functions are complete and orthogonal, and the orthogonality relation is 0 to, once again I'm using A, this is a bad choice, but um, let me stick with it because I don't think I can change on the fly. Uh, JL of ZLN R over A J L of Z L M R over A. So this was an N, that an M. R squared dr is equal to A cubed over 2. J squared L plus 1 of Z L M delta M M. So the N's are labeling the eigenvalue the eigenvalue being, um, uh, well, L in general. Well, L labels the equation, N and M label the eigenvalues, and um, I didn't, let's see, I didn't write the thing down in self-adjoint, well, that is in self-adjoint form, what happens is you scale, this is JL of X, you change JL of X to JL of Z, L, N, X over A, and, um, all right, let me see if I can, um, Anyway, the eigenvalues here are k squared, or k, k squared ln is z squared ln over a squared, and this, um, these are something like n plus l over 2 times pi squared over a squared. So the eigenvalues go to infinity as they, their labels go to infinity. And um, um, let's 
see one, two. Let me give you a formula for JL at small rho. This is approximately rho to the L over 2L plus 1 double factorial. And um, for big rho, what we have is that this is approximately sine rho minus L pi over 2 divided by rho. And so that's as uh, the rho much greater than 1. Um, there's a f formula that's um, used in quantum mechanics and in particular in scattering theory um, and it's basically that you can write a plane wave e to the i k prime dot r over 2 pi to the 3 halves you can write this as a sum l equals 0 to infinity square root of 2 over pi I to the L, little j L K R, Y L M of theta and phi, and then Y star L M of theta prime and phi prime. So the theta prime and phi prime refer to the angle of the angles of K. And um, and this actually, now that I think about it, there's no real reason why um, all right, well, then, in that case, I could call this k prime. So uh, k prime is the magnitude of the vector k prime that k prime. R has uh, angles theta and phi, and the polar angle, the, uh, the polar angle, the polar coordinates of um, k prime or theta prime and phi prime. So this is um, something that's derived here in the in the chapter, um, but I don't I don't really think we have time to go through it. Um, Let's you want to see something about quantum dots? Yes, sure. do it. All right. Um, these are used a lot in modern technology. And now, I'm not giving a, an engineer's description of common dots, uh, of, of quantum dots. Um, this is, so to speak, a, an oversimplified theoretical physics perspective from quantum mechanics. Of quantum. So it's the simplest possible model of quantum dots. What we've got is Schrodinger's equation, minus h bar squared over 2m, or plus m psi, plus v psi, equals E psi. And what do we have? We've got a, the dot here is a sphere of radius A, and there's an electron trapped inside. So what do we have? What we have is that psi of A theta phi has to be zero. In other words, the wave function of the electron has to vanish at the surface of the dot. The the dot being the sphere, which is fairly small. The, this, the, this could be cad, cadmium, silana, uh, uh, an amalgam of cadmium and, and selenium, and um, the radius A is of the order of uh, 2 nanometers. 
so um, half the size of, a cell, of the lipid part of the cell membrane. Um, okay, so uh, V is um, negative out to A, and then, um, so this is zero, and then uh, usually positive for A greater, so this is what, so it is basically a, uh, an infinite uh, square well. And um, so if you then think about this, it's, it's effectively a Helmholtz equation in spherical coordinates. And um, the value of, um, of um, if we set k squared equal to 2m, E minus V, so V is the potential, which, as I said, is um, somewhat negative, but finitely negative, V uh, for R less than A um, over A bar squared. Then the normalized wave functions are NLM R theta V is JL of ZLN r over a y l m theta phi and then um, of course we have a theta function theta of a minus r that is to say the theta function is, is zero when its argument is negative so this just goes to zero at the boundary and um, on the other hand, the z's are the zeros of the spherical Bessel function. So when you set r equal to a, this is already zero. So we don't have any crazy discontinuity here. It's that the Bessel function goes to zero and then stays zero because of the theta function, the heavy side function. And um, so if you plug this into um, Schrodinger's equation here, what you find is that um, the eigenvalues are E, N, L, M. Our H bar is Z, L, N over A, A being the radius. Well, the same name that I give to every physical variable in all these problems. Um, uh, plus V. V being this potential here at minus V. And um, the energy gap then is delta En, which would be En10 minus E100, is then Z1N squared minus pi squared a bar squared over 2m a squared. Um, what I'm using there is uh, the, the fact that uh, j0 here is just sine x over x. So it's pretty easy to figure out what the zeros of, the, of j0 are, namely j0 uh, n is just simply n pi because sine x over x vanishes when x is in, is uh, n pi. That's when j zero vanishes, but then um, over here we have to scale out a factor of a, uh, which comes out there. So those are the energy levels and. Um, well, we've run out of time, but basically, um, putting in reasonable units, what you find is that um, uh, for typical values of A, delta E3 is 4.14 EV um, times 
a nanometer over A squared. So if A is in the right range, this is in the visible. So it's All right, I, I, I think any questions? Okay, I think we can turn it off.